Welcome to Inside Music Curation. We are live here. It's Wednesday. It's one o'clock. So we're going to talk about music curation. It's a new year, start of 2022. Uh, so everybody's talking about motivation, getting ready for resolutions. So we thought, what better time to talk about how music motivates you? And today I'm joined by our senior curator and writer, Eric Stensfog. We call him Stens. Good to see you this week. Hello. And very special guest, we have Frank Fitzpatrick. He is an award-winning creative executive, filmmaker, Grammy-nominated songwriter, best-selling author with a new book, uh, social entrepreneur and wellness expert, Frank Fitzpatrick. Thank you so much for joining us on Inside Music Curation today. Happy to be here. Looking forward to it. So again, at Feed Media Group, we curate music for businesses. We do a lot of work in the fitness space, wellness. So this is this is right in our wheelhouse. And uh, Frank is a, a good friend now that, that aligns with a lot of the work that we're doing in music and wellness and fitness. And so I wanted to start off the conversation, just pull it back a little bit and talk about music in general. Music, I think we all know, has this innate ability to motivate um, but curious to know, what makes a song motivational? Is it the energy? Is it the lyrics? Is it a combination of both? Um, so Stens, I'm going to kick it off to you first to hear a little bit about, you know, music's general ability to motivate us. Well, yeah, I mean, it has a profound ability and that's the, you know, the work that we do as curators is predicated on that ability. I mean, I think intuitively now, whether you use music to wake up in the morning use turn on the radio in the car to stay focused if you have a long drive or you might you know use music during workouts which is kind of at the the nexus of where we often exist um but uh, so i think intuitively we know that music works but um did you know i mean i'll just throw out a few facts that are pretty significant and profound that music listening engages nearly every area of the brain that's been identified uh, it's been proven to regulate arousal and mood um, and then there's also been decades of studies, which I know Frank will talk about as well, that have shown the positive correlation between music and activities as diverse as shopping to exercise to re you know, recovery from um, health related uh, injuries or conditions. So, um, and I think in answer to your question of lyrics, music, you know, um, style, all of the above, and it all depends on your personality more than anything, but um, I think, you know, we, we want to spend at least a good amount of our time talking about music and fitness because we have a new white paper that we're really excited about that specifically gets into this synergy that's existed. It's, it's, it's really, it's almost a timeless synergy. It goes back to the ancient Olympics and we know this, but we have an increasing amount of research around it. And Frank, will you talk a little bit about some of the specific benefits of music in fitness that you have uh, studied and talked about through your work? Well, yeah, I'd be happy to. We've kind of looked at some of the same research, and I know that you used Dr. Costas Georges. I never know if I pronounce his name right, in your work as I did uh, in my research for my book in the section on, you know, performance. And, you know, he cites, you know, and uh, Melissa will jump in on some of this, you know. Um, but, you know, in particular, you know, they cite five areas uh, um, that are useful for people to know and I, I would add one to that that, that that he he doesn't talk about, which is really useful for people that I found in at least the high performance world. So, you know, disassociation, which means that basically we have a lower perception of the the stress or the challenge uh, um, or the pain of what we're working on. So, you know, you play music and what used to be really hard, that workout, that routine, those lifting those weights, you know, doing those uh, you know those 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 movements um, suddenly be, feel like a little lighter, and that's psychologically going on the in the brain as it's it's separating that association as well as pumping up some of the neurochemicals. Um, arousal regulation. You want me to keep going, or you want to jump in on yeah, that? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Yeah, go for it. You know, you know the second one that you know that I broke down when I was looking at uh, Kara George's work is uh, arousal regulation is the second point. So that's basically. A really interesting one that people sometimes don't think about. So you can think of like a martial artist. It's like you're using it to keep your, um, you know, your neurochemicals from getting overstimulated. You don't really want everything to be adrenalized. People have a misconception about that. You know, just pump it up and I'll get through this. But you actually want to regulate your emotions. If you think of like a martial artist or, you know, I tell a story of sometimes of, um, 
a, a doctor I know who trained the uh, Tour de France team, you know. So he had to really um, get them to change their music to be less adrenalizing because they had to ride for 3,500 miles. If they're over pushing their adrenal systems, they're going to burn out. Um, it's the same really in a workout process, especially if you're doing endurance type workouts like runs or marathons. Um, Phil Mathetone talks about this really in the training process. He's one of the lead uh, long endurance marathon coaches, um, many world champions, and where you're really trying to keep your arousal state and also your uh, aerobic zone, which is where your heart rate and at, at, a, at a particular, we call it within the aerobic zone, you know, not in the anaerobic zone, which is actually starts to burn you out and drains from, um, you know, starts to burn your system out. So music Finding can help. That sweet that. spot, right? That sweet that spot sweet where you spot, can have, you know, maximum you can, output, but yeah, you can maintain. You, yeah. yeah, it's kind of like the same thing you would do with flow, which is one of the points. And then synchronization, you know, I don't know if you've ever run or you've done a dance dance choreography or workouts where you actually are stepping to the rhythm of the music and and there's been apps that have been built that adjust the tempo of the tunes to your you know to your step if you want that and uh there's stories of you know which, eric you can jump in on this you know a famous story of people who have won gone on to win the olympics by using those, these methods even when they're not listening to the music just by training in it um you well, know, and, uh, and Frank, you know, I think, and one thing related to the um, synchronous element of music is that um, what Professor Kara Georges and what I'm sure you've also researched is that there is a, a subconscious um, kind of uh, almost a metronomic function that our bodies physiologically know what to do. We may not know, we may not be trained on beats per minute, we not, may not know anything about music from a technical standpoint, but our bodies just, they synchronize up to that music. So even for people that may, you know, maybe don't know about music, this, this effect is available to them and it really helps them. Yes. And you can, you know, anybody can feel when they, something suddenly they find themselves, they're listening to something that's got a beat that they like, then suddenly they feel their foot tapping, you know, <laughs> their brain just responding that, you know, music functions in the areas of the brain, um, we call it emotion, energy, and motion because it's the you know where the motor coordination is is in the same overlaps the emotional stimuli. So you're combining those two boosts um, in the brain and coordinating this emotional um, neurochemical trigger along with this synchronistic desire of the brain to be in sync. <clears throat> so there's some it's 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 pretty cool how it all functions when you bring it together and when when you are if you've ever done that and you find that you know that perfect song and you're you know a runner and it's got a perfect rhythm it's it's pretty cool to feel that stride it's really much easier to keep yourself going and regulate your system while you're doing it <clears throat> um that's called synchronization um and you you know you guys talk about it in your white paper i think as well and and then uh, motor skills so we just talked about how music and rhythms help develop the motor cortex and the intersection of the motor and the rest of the nervous system and the body and the muscle system. So um, we can use music to help us cord, you know, build motor coordination, motor skills. Um, and then uh, the last number it's five. Frank, that I, Frank, think, may I just as a quick interject, because I think it's totally yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's on the cutting edge uh, right now of what we're learning about and we're paying a close attention to is in not just, um, exercise, if you will, but holistic health that recovering stroke patients, you know, uh, people that have dementia or Alzheimer's that, that these, uh, right now. Parkinson, with, yeah. Parkinson's. Yeah. Parkinson's. Yeah, exactly. That, that, that music is being used increasingly as ways to metronomically, you know, like with Stevie Wonder's superstition, for example, you play it for a recovering stroke victim and it can really, uh, powerfully in ways that words and other physical therapies cannot do. It can get that human, you know, to, to, to start moving again. Uh, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It gets those systems to synchronize again between the brain and the motor coordination and the nervous system. And uh, yeah, we're using it with Parkinson's patients, you know, to have them relearn their gait. Um, it even works because of the intersection with speech. You see it like people who have stutters and they can retrain to speak fluidly <laughs> um, while they're listening to music. So there's, you know, it's again, connecting these different areas of the brain in a unique way that only music can do. And then the, uh, you know, the, the, the um, number five to get, you know, off the coastless list um, is that the, uh, 
is flow. So, you know, I'll, if you're in the peak performance space, you know, what some, a lot of people in the exercise and workout community call this is, you know, getting in the zone or, you know, people, you know, or music performers, you know, get in the zone, you know, it's like, it's this state when you lose track of time, you're, you're at the edge of your kind of, you're pushing your edge of some level of challenge, but not enough challenge is going to take you out, but it's going to, you know, it, it's got you running on all gears and, um, you're in a sweet spot of your skills and, and you're a hundred percent engaged. The brain starts to act differently. And what happens when we add music, um, music is, um, in, in peak performance, we talk about flow triggers. So that might be breath, uh, different meditation, different styles of practices, but a movement, um, creates a, is a flow trigger, you know, trigger certain neurochemicals in the brain. Well, when you add music to those other flow triggers, you we create like a, a neurological cocktail. Um, so especially true and especially apparent in exercise because you're adding a, one of the most powerful ones, which is movement. And then you're adding music on top of it, you know? And, um, I think the key to all of this is it's, it's, it's not just listening to music. It's consciously listening to music to towards an outcome. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and, and that then you can really shape your game. That's, that's a game changer. So, uh, you know, and listening, just listening to the to music, right music. And, the right music at the right time, right? The right music right. can help, you know, get you ready. If you're pre-workout, the right music can can get you into that workout state before you start moving. And then you, you know, begin your exercise and it can Absolutely. help you work out harder while feeling it less. And then it helps you come back down. It really just takes you from, from beginning to end, the full spectrum. And as, you know, as Stens, I think you referred to this earlier, it's, you know, it's, it's the right music for you. So, you know, in all the scientific studies, you know, and I've looked at a thousand of them, thousand of them is, is that, uh, you know, personalization, we're very unique individuals and, and music is very complex and we're very complex and personalization is really key to the efficacy of music. So you may go into a group, um, you know, aerobics class or something, you know, for example, that's usually, you know, you know, pumping up some music. And for some people, it's going to be just psychologically it's going to help them rock it and some people it's going to you know psychologically make them want to leave the room does that mean the music's right or wrong that the teacher's playing no not really it's, it just means that it doesn't align with the you know preferences psychological and physiological preferences of some people so um that's a really key factor to know so you know it's really you know you're you're the one who knows best and you test on yourself that's what i always say to people you know see how it works you know, see what changes um, if you're actually measuring your performance, like your heart rate and different things with during your performance, you know, see what happens, you know, your timing. But otherwise, just really what, you know, trust your body. It's a great communicator. We're talking about exercise and what feels good, you know. Um, motivation is, is movement, right? It's motor skills in action, right? One thing I, if I can just add to that, I mean, I think we've been dancing around this new white paper that our company feed media group has that is, uh, I don't think coincidentally drawing from a lot of the exact same sources that you've drawn from in your important work. Um, and one of those experts being professor Costas Karagiorgis. I mean, the title of that new white paper is called the ABC of music and exercise. Um, and we'll break that down for just a couple minutes at least, but I just want to say to any, lay people out there that might be flooded with information, one of the main takeaways from this is that music works. And one of the most interesting things recently in speaking with Professor Kara George, as he shared, is that even, uh, you know, non-curated music, even not thoughtfully applied, just music, even just putting music in there, it has a material improvement uh, that has been statistically demonstrated in the data. So what we're talking about is, a, integrating music into activities, including fitness, it works. B, the extent to which you use that strategically and thoughtfully, you get improved lift, but you don't have to, you know, get um, kind of deer in headlights about, oh, what's the right song? <laughs> right. Go right. Right. with your gut, throw it on. If it feels good, do it. If it feels bad, don't do it. Right. Absolutely. Yes. It's, uh, you know, we don't want, you don't have to be a music professional we're all actually you know we all have the gift of music and we all know have a relationship with music that's much more profound and and i say to people music actually has a relationship with you already so you know as beethoven infers and you know as music is a form of higher intelligence that understands humankind better than mankind understands itself so 
you I know, love just that. love, love. <laughs> so, so I, you know, it's, it's really knowing that, it, you know, there is a, an energy and an intention around music that's very connected to the development of the human being for it to fulfill its potential and be in a, in an optimal state. And, and um, you don't have to be a scientist to make those choices. You don't have to, but being conscious around it is another, is another thing. You can bring mindfulness to it. You can bring consciousness to it. You can try, listen to your body and do trial and error. These are things that anybody can do. Um, you can take a few tips, try them, and they may or may not work for you. Um, and that doesn't mean there's anything right or wrong with you. You know, it's just, it's um, so um, it's great. Mm -hmm. There's, yeah, and there's a, there's another thing I do in the framework that that um, Costa doesn't get into, but we can come back to that. I want to, Melissa, you got something? Yeah, I just I want to say two things. If anyone's joining us midway, or just you know, um, you know, we're talking about two resources. So Feed Media Group has a white paper coming out on January 18th um, in partnership with Professor Costas Carrick Georges, um, talking about the ABC of of music in exercise. Um, so please, you know, keep an eye on Feed FM. Uh, to get the updated white paper when that's available. And then we also have Frank Fitzpatrick here with us, who has recently authored a book called Amplified. Um, and Frank, I'd love to touch a little bit on the book, um, you know, outside of direct exercise and workout applications, which is what we work in a lot here with, with Feed Media Group and Feed FM. You know, I'd love to hear you talk in your book about, you know, playlisting your life, right? And creating playlists for your life as an, as an individual, um, you know, around focus, inspiration, relaxation, motivation, you know, can you just tell us a little bit more about what it's like to playlist your life and, and where people might start besides right, well, reading your book, which they can find at amplifiedbook.com? <laughs> sure. sure. Well, yeah, yes, you can find more information there. You can read it or listen to whatever's your, your modality. Um, and also just, you know, um, why it came to be is, you know, um, you know, I'm collected, connected, the reason we connected, I'm connected to a group of people around the world, some of the leading doctors, medicine, researchers, scientists, um, performers, um, committed to transforming the way people understand and apply music to help them thrive um, in their lives and, and actualize their potential, you know, unleash their potential to the power of music. Um, and also, you know, in times like this to also find calm in the midst of chaos, you know, so there's these kind of two extremes, like how do we you know, kind of rock it with music, but, uh, you know, uh, one of the big parts of, um, high, you know, workouts and exercise and growing, um, per and performance is, is also, um, scheduling and, and, and optimizing your recovery. So, um, so that's a really important thing to understand. If you're just going to the gym and then stressing the rest of the time, going to the gym, stressing the rest of the time, you're really not going to optimize your system and you're not using music across the board. So recovery time is, can be used for music. Well, too. And, if, if you, and if you, if you get old enough to be our age, if you're not stretching, you know, you're going to be in trouble too. So <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Stretch the mind, stretch the body. Yeah. So, so, um, yeah, within the book, there's uh, one of the chapters and, and one of the things I work with with some of my um, coaching clients and also when we're doing workshops with all kinds of people is um, called the power playlist. So I ask people to, you know, you do this power playlisting all the time. People do it. They create their favorite playlist. But I really try to um, have people focus on what is create the playlist by the state they want to achieve within their system, right? So um, for the power playlist, I, I start with four basic ones. It's actually five, you know, kind of like the points we just went over. And, um, and, it's, and I use the acronym FIRM. So FIRM is F for focus, I for inspiration, um, um, R for relaxation, which is that recovery, and M for, for uh, motivation, which is what we're called, but I, actually movement, actually. So it's the movement side versus the inspiration side. So movement actually engages motor skills. Inspiration doesn't need to be, you know, necessarily um, in a movement phase. And so, uh, you know, building by those and, and, and slowly building those for yourself and testing those um, for different route, for different states you want to achieve allows you to kind of not go on to, you know, go on to Spotify and say, okay, I want to listen to, you know, do I want to listen to Adele or do I want to listen to my 70s party playlist or do I want to listen to, you know, it's like, no, today I know that I've been practicing with this and it helps me achieve this state. You know, it helps me 
get my, you know, get my um, energy recharged, my nervous system back on track, whatever it is you're trying to accomplish, gets me out of the slums, gets me out of brain fog, you know, um, and I up to my game and my workout. And, and uh, it's the 30 minute one for the 30 minute workout, you know, and you, you, you know, you just go to those, you know, without having to go to like a whole you know, scramble through the ads and going through the, the different choices. So you kind of, you know, you can be more optimized than that. And then the last one is, is um, meditation and music's a great gateway to meditation, especially for people who don't uh, have a meditation practice, but you know, that's a whole nother lane we could go down. So we won't, we won't go there today. No. Frank, you know, in, in talk, thank you so much for sharing that in, in looking at your book and learning about your firm, those four playlists or those five playlist types that you recommend to people. Um, I, I was struck by the the beautiful simplicity of how you, you kind of, you know, um, you just distilled them down to like a few really important anchor ones. And just speaking, hearing you speak about it right now, it's, you know, music is a legitimate alternative form of medicine. You know, right. and I think that this is a this is a natural segue in the conversation, which is to say that um, there are, you know, physiological and psychological, psycho-emotional benefits to be gained from music that's being proved in more and more studies that it's an alternative, if you will, and or supplemental um, um, treatment to, you know, pills, to medicine, um, and that without the side effects, which is, I think, a relatively new thing that people are not aware of this, that it's demonstrably has these powers. Uh, there's been many studies about this with, you know, we have a lot of medical information on our website of Feed FM and our blog, but coming to my point, excuse me, how come this isn't getting the type of legitimacy and kind of public awareness yet, um, if you will, that that music is a valid form of, of uh, you know, uh, additional medicine or these type of value propositions? Um, well, I mean, without getting too deep into it, I mean, one of the reasons is it's it's a 500 year um, development of the basically the narrowing of what music can do in our lives in Western culture from from being part of every part of the tradition of the tribe or the culture and using it for medicine, using it for social um, connection, using it for identity of and building identity of individual, all these things that we can do with music that are quite profound and, and real. Um, into make, commoditizing, you know, first making it a performance piece um, where it's separate from the the observer and the performers, you know, and building a whole culture upon, you know, observing performers and then tra training people about how to use music to become performers, but not really how to get through their day. <laughs> you know, so we, we kind of skip. And then uh, and then the other pieces, then it got commoditized. So it could be made. So, so we narrowed like all these different ways that music shows up in our lives and, and we and, and can help us in different areas of our lives into basically two narrow lanes, which is commodity, which has kind of gone down to zero with, you know, it went to 99 cents and then, you know, to 9.95 a month. <laughs> so the valuization in other areas has shrunk. And then, um, and then the other one is, you know, performance, you know, so, and if you're not, and people kind of feel they have a self judgment, it's built into our culture. If you're not uh, a trained musician or a performer, there's something, there's some level of inadequacy. So you should stop, you know, and you should just be a fan. There's just this division, but you're not trained. Nobody's training us, you know, as kids, which we should be training all our kids is, is like, you know, you need, you, you know, music can be your friend music can t be your teacher music can be your healer um you know, amen. Can be, amen to that amen you know, and, and and that's that sounds like beautiful metaphors you know because we're talking about children but but it, there's real science across all of that and and it's been around it's just that it's kind of gotten narrowed and and as something goes into the marketplace as, as a devalued commodity and um then we only we teach it as a we devalue it across the places where we need it most like education healthcare and it gets pulled out of those systems because it doesn't it isn't seen as a as a pathway to increase the com, you know the value of those economic or commodity commodity structures yeah that's well said. that was not an easy question so thank you for <laughs> well that's sharing. a long that's a long-winded answer so no, no 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 there were some great insights there thank you for sharing and that Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Melissa. Go ahead. I was just say we've got just a couple minutes left, um, so I want to leave people with you know just a few more actionable items. You know, 
I think for, you know, for individuals, you know, looking for the right music or businesses looking for the right music, Stens, can you offer just, you know, a tip on where to start, um, where to start their music, you know, curation journey? Absolutely. Well, for businesses, come to Feed FM, you know, feed.fm. Uh, and, you know, we do a great job. We work with um, you know, dozens of the largest fitness companies in the world and then a, a much broader array of companies, including American Eagle uh, and others. Um, so, you know, check us out and we make the licensing simple and legal. And the tech stack, which I can take no credit for, is brilliant and incredible <laughs> um, for individuals. Um, you know, talk to your friends, you know, crowdsource it. Uh, even as a professional curator, I'm frequently going on, you know, Spotify, Billboard, you know, Twitter, this, that, and the other. I subscribe to tons of music magazines. So just, you know, crowdsource it and patch it together. Um, or go to, you know, again, not to be too self-promotional, but we actually, even for individuals, if you go to feed.fm or our blog, we have free music samples for different fitness modalities. And we also have a lot of great articles about music for yoga and music for, you know, um, high intensity interval training. So check us out there too. Um, and, and I'm sure Frank could add to that, uh, particularly in the realm of the integrated, you know, self-actualized individual where I think you have really tremendous expertise. Um, yeah, and feed at, you know, just on top of what you're doing, it's great what, what feed FM is doing. And when we talk about how, where we are in the gap of mu people understanding music, it's great that you're doing this work. These are the kinds of things we have to do is to provide proven, of, you know, systems that show efficacy consistently and, and to get the validation back up and the value back up, you know, um, for, you know, in terms of helping people, I mean, um, the book at amplifiedbook.com, if you go to that there, you can also download a free um, piece we put together to help people navigate the stresses of COVID and to, you know, find different ways to deal with stress during the day and different during this time, especially. Um, you know, the book helps support my nonprofit, so I'm not promoting it to take the to make money. I'm I really want to pay this for it, or we really are committed to transforming um, people's lives by the way they experience and use music. So I really highly recommend that. And then one, uh, you know, I'll just give one piece because we started with exercise that, um, you know, I coach a few high level, high performing execs and, you know, and, and you know, high performers and, and if somebody's interested in that. They can reach out to feed FM or to me. But, you know, one of the things that through getting through COVID again, because, you know, we've all been locked into offices and you've had, you know, or at home or wherever we're, you know, and, 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 and we've been doing a lot of sit and sitting in front of screens. So I hope you're dancing while you're watching this now. <laughs> you know, <'cause laughs> we're not looking. So um, but the uh, is these micro practices. So this has been um, life saving to people who lead large teams around the world. And so a micro practice might be, you know, you, they can't get to the gym and do the whole workout. They can't get to the, you know, they can't afford a Pendleton um, bike at home. And, and they, so you take look, what you would think of like a circuit train circuit training where you broke things into five and 10 minute practices and you break those down across the day. And if you can get three of those in by one o'clock in the afternoon, I can, you know, I can be, five push-ups, it can be a one song dance and you frame them in music. So you go, okay, I'm gonna, these two songs are like, you know, they add up to 12 minutes. I'm just gonna go for a quick walk around the block for these two songs. You know? I, and you kind of have this safety and comfort zone because you only have a, you have a time parameter, but you're also doing um, more good than if you were doing that all at once in a, in a mm -hmm. solid hour. And, um, you know, you can break it into something harder. I do, a, you know, one song, 50 burpees, or, you know, you know, I do, a, you know, different things that may be beyond what some people can do. But this, that's, this micro practice across the day, if, you know, for this lockdown stuff is going to be a game changer, I guarantee. And, and it can be fun. And if you got kids and your kids are trying to get your attention and, you know, just, okay, let's do a one song dance time. You know, <laughs> Let's put on your favorite dance song, get the kids up and jump in, you know, and, and, and let everybody go back to work it will completely change your neural chemistry. If you get that done, you know, a couple of those in by one o'clock in the afternoon, um, your rest of your day, will be a completely different game. I love that. I feel like that's, that's so actionable. And, you know, for those of us juggling families and work and small kids, you know, it's tough to get a, you know, a two-year-old to sit through a half an hour workout, but if we can have a <laughs> 10 minute dance party or, you know, something like that, I, I love that idea of, um, 
of breaking into these micro practices throughout the day. I think that's excellent, excellent advice for the new year, for any time of the year, but particularly now when we might be, you know, have higher expectations and getting down on ourselves if we're not, you know. Right. I mean, think about it. We used to listen to albums and now we listen to singles. So just take that album practice and put it into singles, but do it through music and movement together for exercise. It's a game changer. There you go. There you go. I love that. Well, Well, thank you guys. Oh, sorry. Go on. I was just gonna say thank you guys. We're we're at time. It's 1:30. Um, I'm gonna throw up a few slides for folks tuning in that that have some links that are helpful. Um, but thanks, Stens. Thank you, Frank, for you know being our special guest today, talking about music that motivates. Um, we're Feed Media Group. This is Inside Music Curation, and we're here every other week. Um, you know, one of the first things that we talked about was uh, the new white paper coming out. It's coming out on the website Feed FM next Tuesday, the 18th. The uh, ABC of Music in exercise. Uh, and also we're talking about Frank's new book. You can find it at amplifiedbook.com. Uh, there's an audio version. There's the, the Kindle version. It's it's all there. So a great and free uh, gift. Yeah. Free gifts to help you get through the stress of COVID. Yeah. 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 And, and yeah. supporting a good cause. Tell us one more time, Frank, where, where the funds are going from this. Uh, Earth Tones org is uh, my nonprofit, and and we've developed programs across the world to help um, in all these different kinds of areas. We're talking at the intersection of health and and wellness and and uh, education too, for you know um, using music and um, you know very committed to providing these tools for uh, for kids of, from ninety nine to <laughs> all the way down. <laughs> so, so. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, Jacinda, for tuning in and everyone else who's watching uh, Feed Media Group Inside Music Curation. We'll see you next time. Awesome. Great to hang with you guys. Thanks so Keep much. Up great, Keep up the great work. Keep the music. <laughs> you, as well. you as well, Frank. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure. Bye-bye now.